What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're starting a new series here today for the new year, and it's called Library Card. I went ahead and got my library card at the Brooklyn Public Library, and I also got it at the New York Public Library, which are separate things. So with the library card, I can basically rent any photo book that I want across the entire public library system, and that's pretty good because there's so much good stuff out there. So I went to my local one here in Bushwick, and I'm starting today with this book right here. This book is called Eye to Eye, and this is a Vivian Meyer photo book. And this one's quite peculiar. Um, I say peculiar because it's kind of lesser known. This one's all about street portraiture. And Vivian Meyer is often painted as a very kind of solitary, quirky, kind of outcasty kind of person. Um, and interestingly enough, in this book, you really don't get that sense at all because through the portraiture and the images that you're about to see, you can tell that she was actually interacting with people and she had relationships with people, whether they were brief or longer term. And you know, she was a human just like you and I. She was out there interacting with the world and of course photographing it. So I've looked at this book up and down, in and out, left and right, and there's a couple key things that have stuck out to me. There's three kind of key lessons that I'm taking away from my experience of this book. The first one has to do with actually interacting with your subjects in street photography. Street photography is often kind of thought as being this candid kind of process where you don't interact with the people or with the scene, you're kind of a fly on the wall. In this book, Vivian Meyer is not that at all. You can tell via the images that she's actually going up to people, talking to them. I don't know what she said to them. There's no kind of record of any of that. But the people that are in these images, most of them know that she's taking a photo of them. And whether it was something that was noticed last second by the subject or whether she actually sat down and talked to them or introduced herself, um, you know, we don't know. But there was a range of activity and these photos all happen within that range. And I think that's a very important thing to understand because a lot of people might shy away from talking to people in the streets thinking that that's gonna change the dynamic of the photo for the worst. It will change the dynamic of whatever photo you end up capturing, but a candid photo is just as valuable as one that's posed or one that you had some sort of engagement with the subject. In fact, the kind of photo you can create once you engage with somebody is completely different and just as valuable in its own way because of the fact that you couldn't capture that photo if you didn't talk to that person. When you talk to somebody and they become comfortable with you and they kind of share their story or a couple words, whatever it is, that instantly changes things. And someone who's comfortable with you will sit very nicely for a portrait and you might be able to pull something out of them that you definitely wouldn't have gotten out of them if it was a candid photo. So seeing these images here reminds me that I should continue doing what I am doing in the streets in terms of talking to people and interacting and just kind of exploring and feeling the world around me. And seeing it in here is just a reminder that that is valuable and that that is just as good as anything that's candid. So if we look at the book here, you see there's so many different portraits with eye contact. There's a lot of people looking straight at her when she's taking the image. And there's one specific one that I wanna show you here that I think captures the, the look so well and kind of demonstrates how the eye contact itself adds so much value. I think this is one of them right here. She could have easily taken a portrait of this person without really you know, making them look at the camera, but his eyes say so much. You wonder who is this guy? He looks so innocent and so kind of interesting and pensive. And the eye contact is everything. And in this case, the eyes aren't even looking at the camera. The eyes are actually looking theoretically at Vivian herself, which I think is that much more interesting. She clearly wasn't afraid of having people know that she's creating the image. And more interestingly enough, in this photo, I don't even know if she even interacted with this person. The fact that he's looking at her maybe means that she kind of just walked right up to him and started engaging by taking the photo as opposed to saying actual words. There's another one here I want to show you where you can actually see uh, some eye contact as well. This one right here. In this one, the person's looking right at the camera and I have no idea why she's looking at the camera. I don't know anything about her, but her stare says so much and her stare combined with the texture of her skin and even her pose where she's covering her mouth, it makes the eyes so important. The eyes in this photo, make the entire photo. Without it, it would have been completely different. Real quick, NewClaxonFilm.com is now a full-blown web shop. We're carrying film from your favorite providers such as Kodak, Fuji, Ilford, etc. Our goal with this project is to offer film at the cheapest prices possible, so make sure to go check out the link. A few things are out of stock right now, but definitely sign up for the newsletter so you don't miss out when we have stock again. Another thing that I really noticed here is that Vivian Meyer made an effort to showcase the environment around her portrait subjects. So it's not like she was just getting really close to people and just fitting in as much as possible while retaining minimum focus. She was stepping back maybe two, three steps, maybe even more, just to showcase not only the subject, but how they fit into the environment around them. And this is really important because there are so many details that you might be able to kind of infer about a scene 
based on what's going on around your subject. And more importantly is how your subject is interacting with the environment around them. That tells the entire story. And that's nowhere more important than with Vivian Meyer's work because we have so little information about what she was doing and kind of what was in her head while she was walking around. You know, she wasn't really documenting this stuff. Nobody knew who she was. And, you know, now we're seeing all her images kind of from the future, at least from her perspective, you know, long past after, you know, she was actually creating these images. And therefore we have to infer and kind of assume a lot of things about the images here. So having all of that context, all of that information around the subject really allows us to sink into these images and start to think about, you know, why they were created, what was going on, what must have been the interaction between Vivian and the person in the image. And environments just look cool. They add so much texture and dimension to photos. Without the environment, sometimes photos might feel a little bit incomplete. This is one of my favorite environmental portraits in the entire book. There's a lot of reasons why I love this portrait, but obviously the environment is very, very obvious in this image. And this looks like a mountain range and there's it's snow cap. You can see there's probably some highlights here from snow. Um, and then you've got this guy right here in front of it. Um, he looks like he's a worker based off of his clothes and he's got the cigarette in the mouth. That all gives me worker vibes, but he's in the mountains here. So you're curious, what is he doing in the mountains? Is he some sort of a farmer? Does he work as like in a, in a mine, for example? Is he in tourism? Who knows? But you could have taken a photo of this guy anywhere, but she chose to showcase the mountains behind him. And that makes all the difference. There's so many other good ones in here. Let's see if I can find another one really quickly that showcases exactly what I'm talking about. This is another great one right here. Um, it looks like we're in some sort of a convenience shop. And I think in this case, showcasing the background and the environment matters a lot, not so much because of the story that it tells, but because of the extra texture that it adds to the image. There's all these kind of repeating patterns because of the packaging of the different stuff back there. And they're stacked and there's a bunch of lines and there's the horizontal lines from the shelves. It just adds so much. It makes this photo very interesting and dynamic. This is exactly what I'm talking about right here. Combining the background with the subject matter and just really telling a, a really in-depth story. The last thing I took from this book that really struck me is how much fun it looks like Vivian Meyer was having. I said earlier that people think she's quirky and kind of like, you know, a little bit different, let's say. And I think that's a strength of hers. And it is evident in some of the photos here, not all of them, but in a nice selection of them. A lot of these images seem to be a bit abstract. They don't really focus on the portrait subject. Instead, they focus on kind of what's happening around the portrait subject that makes the photo different or unusual. And maybe that's why it's even worth capturing. A lot of these images, you know, the, the subject is in the photo, obviously, but you know, what they're wearing or what's happening around them or what shape or what thing is abstracting the view, that becomes more important than the actual subject of the portrait themselves. So Vivian Meyer's out there playing. She's out there looking and just kind of like, you know, seeing what's going on around her and being creative. It's not just about finding someone who's interesting and taking a photo of them, which I do think is a good thing, but it's also about just kind of looking around and noticing what's going on that might be out of the ordinary or unusual or just something that is interesting enough for you to take a photo of it. Lastly, I want to showcase here some of the whimsical images that I'm referring to. There's one here that I really, really love and it has a little boy in it. Here we go. This is the one. This photo is just her having fun. She sees this kid as a circle around his face and he looks kind of silly and he's got a price tag here from something that he's wearing. It's just a funny photo and there's no good reason why she should have taken this, but it caught her attention. There was an interesting aspect in terms of the composition on his face because of that shape and she did it. There's another one I want to show you as well that showcases some of the shapes as well. This is it right here. This is awesome and this showcases this incredible circle right here focusing on the guy and it just adds so much intrigue to this image. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is all of it combined in one. You've got abstract shapes, you've got a bit of a reflection, and then you've got a portrait all in one. And of course you got the square composition from the format itself. This is a really awesome image. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, this is a new series on this channel. We've got a bunch more books coming. Got a whole stack right there on the couch. I'm not gonna tell you what they are, but some really cool stuff. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode from this new series. And if you don't have a library card, go get one. You're honestly not making use of something that's fantastic because the books are free. You just gotta take care of them and not lose them or, or damage them and they're free. So you might as well do that, especially if you're looking to buy a book. Maybe you can see it first before spending all that money on it. So definitely take advantage of that. All right, y'all, to the next video, I'm out.